your speed, Father, would constantly do great things. In Jesus' name. Thank you. 
with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham, a son in his old age, at the time which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old. Son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. And she said, Who would have said Abraham and Sarah would nurse children, yet have borne him a son in his old age? The child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on that day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar. Amen. So uh, let's start with worship today because the Lord has just spoken to us through our human ears. Let's worship. Father, we come before your throne and we do worship you. We invite you to be here among us today, Father, in a way that we can feel it. We pray that you would transform us, change us forever uh, through the preaching of your word, Father, because you're here with us. Just soften our hearts and teach us what you would have us learn. Our text today begins in Galatians 4, Galatians 4 beginning in verse 26, if you want to follow along. Galatians 4, 26, but the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. And there is one, one spectacular theme that everything in our text is driving us towards at breakneck speed today, but you will have to turn the page into chapter 5, chapter 5 to find it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For freedom Christ has set you free, Christian. O oh, glory be to God. Everything else is foundational, building towards that awesome declaration. Turning back to Galatians 4.26 now. A couple of weeks ago, I went to great lengths to convince our hearts that that this free Jerusalem above, she is our mother, Galatians 4, 16. And one facet of this continues to be a matter of worship, and the Gospels tease this out. When the walking, talking, living temple of God arrives in the manger, not yet talking, not yet walking, wise men and women begin worshiping Messiah. And this is the Messiah that the brick and mortar temple serves only to foreshadow. So the earthly temple was never designed to compete with the real temple of the living God, the Word, become flesh. When the powers that be in Jerusalem first deny and then crucify Christ, their Messiah, and then later when the circumcision gang rides into the Galatians and denies the total sufficiency of the cross of Christ for our justification before God, because of these events, then the brick and mortar temple, quite shockingly, becomes a slaving Jerusalem works of the law, broken system. Stunningly, verse 25 of Galatians 4 says, Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. In other words, Hagar, she slaves and her children. Speaking of worship now, after the crucifixion, Jesus conquers death and raises right up out of the grave on the third day. And, and John in, in 2025, in John 2025, he says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, unless I touch the holes in his hand with my fingers, unless I reach my hand into his side, I will never believe. That's what, that's what Thomas said. I'm sorry, I said said. That's what Thomas said in John 20, 25. Okay, so eight days later, 
Notice Thomas is left struggling to believe for eight days. In John 20, verse 26, eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he says, Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and, and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. That's worship. Jesus living and resurrected Jesus is to be the new center for our worship. The old school Jewish temple just won't cut it anymore. And as I reported to you before, you, you children of promise are pilgrims. And we are traveling towards not the brick and mortar temple in Jerusalem, but instead the new heavenly Jerusalem where Revelation 20, 21 22 says, And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb. That's Jesus, the Lamb of God. In our new heavenly home, God Himself is the temple. So in the New Testament Gospels, the Pharisees who have spent their entire lives investing in the earthly temple as their golden cash calf, shall we say. Many of them in the Gospels never get over Jesus suddenly being the proper center of worship. Now let's tie the worship of Thomas to God himself being the temple in the free Jerusalem up there, our mother. When you're in glory, pilgrim, when you have finally arrived, you will be experiencing the same risen Jesus Christ as Thomas, scars and all. I suggest the only scars in heaven now. Jesus will be perhaps infinitely more glorified than Thomas could bear to look at, but he is the same resurrected Christ. And if you are walking down the streets of glory, I mean, just, just cruising along, it looks kind of like that in heaven, just cruising along, it's kind of like shaggy out of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Lots of hair flow. So, so when you're cruising by the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing, Revelation 22.1, if you should come across Jesus walking Garden of Eden-like, and you should see the only holy hands and feet in heaven coming towards you, confirmed by the only side of heaven with a redeeming spear wound, you will find yourself freely crying out, what? What shall you exclaim? My Lord and my God. So verse 26 in our text in Galatians 4, Galatians 4 schools us, but the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. Children of promise, you are not headed for Hagar's slaving Jerusalem. You are headed for the new Jerusalem, the temple of the risen from the grave body of Christ, our Lord and our God. The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb of God is to be your temple. Can you feel it with me today? Taste of the reality of that truth and pick up your face, race a little faster, perhaps more confident. Next, next Galatians 4 verse 27 reports, for it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. And I've got to tell you this story. Lisa and I, we've been married for about seven years and we had wanted to have kids for probably about three years, and we're starting to wonder, you know, is this thing really going to happen? And so, we went to a dentist. True story. We went to a dentist. But he was a Christian dentist. And apparently, uh, he was multi-talented, this Christian dentist, because his advice actually worked, worked for us. And so, our first, kid, our first child's name was Joshua. Anyway, so verse 27 of Galatians 4 is Paul quoting Isaiah. Now, the name Isaiah means the Lord is salvation. So the next time you speak to Isaiah, you can say, well, hello, the Lord is salvation. Verse 27 continues, rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who are not in labor. 
for the children of the deaths of one will be more than those of one who has a husband. So some quick, some, some quite ironic leap, things leap out of the text that we ought not to miss. Both cry, but who is the one normally crying out very loudly? Is it the barren woman or the woman in labor? It's supposed to be the woman in labor who is the loud one, right? Please turn to Isaiah 54. Isaiah is in the Old Testament, in between Song of Solomon and Jeremiah. If you're working out of a, out of a real Bible instead of a tablet, Paul is, is quoting the Lord of Salvation, chapter 54. And Isaiah is not a bubble boy living in a bubble when he speaks. He knows the history of Abraham and Baron Sarah and Isaac, the child of promise, when he speaks in verse 1. But, but who is he speaking to? Isaiah is speaking to Jews returning from captivity in Babylon to Jerusalem. Because of Israel's wickedness, these Jews are conquered and deported by the thousands and thousands. Here in Isaiah 54, we find, find out precisely what kind of crying aloud the Apostle Paul is talking about. 427. So verse 1 of Isaiah 54 begins Paul's quotation. Sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not been in labor for the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. And so the truly striking thing about verse 1 of Isaiah 54 is the play on present tense and future tense. Break forth into singing now, today. What? For something that hasn't even happened yet. Will you dare to leave here singing today, right of Christ? Singing for future blessings. Sometimes I sing to the Lord through tears when I am the most heartbroken ever. So assuming that you all collectively are the barren woman by application. Sing while there are no signs of life, only deadness inside. Have you ever felt that way? I have. Deadness inside of the dead walls of a dead womb. So you're, you're singing, and you're singing, and you're still barren, but you go on singing. And verse 2 gives feet, actions to your singing faith. Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. And, and the, the tents here that, that being discussed is really interesting. They're made out of, out of dark hand woven goat's hair. Dark hand woven goat's hair. You got one of those in your backyard? And so the idea is that when you're going to have children, when you're going to have a child, you're going to add on about three feet to your tent, about three feet of, of woven goat's hair per child. So, so it'd be like um, nine feet here if you have Joshua, you know, you go around the room and you count, it'd be three feet for the hand is in the back there, and on and on it goes. Uh, I mean, three times three feet, nine feet for them as well. So, are you getting excited, friends? When more children are added to the family, they just added a few more strips of goat's hair as needed. So, if you add more goat's hair strips, then the cords that stretch from the seven poles to the quarter poles would have to be longer, and the stakes made with stronger and thicker wood because of the added weight. Can't you just dream of this in a Bedouin mobile tent type of society? The little lady starts to show, and her doting husband says something like, Well, little mama, you better start weaving that dark goat's hair. We're going to need more room. We might even need to buy a bigger camel. But notice in this text, she's not showing yet. It's incredible. She's still barren in the text, but God's promise, promise for children of promise is such a reality that the, that the goat's hair is already to be woven and installed just by faith alone. So I have this application question for you from the text in verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent. Would you by faith 
Let the curtains be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. This is so exciting. How is the Holy Spirit applying this to your heart today? What will the Holy Spirit do in us out of obedience to God's preached word? Now jumping together to verse 5 as the bride of Christ now. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth, he is called. Jesus pays the price at the cross to become your kin, who redeems you, buys you for the blood price of your sins, beloved. Do you need a Redeemer today? Look to the cross by faith today as someone from your own human tribe, Son of man, Son of God, paying the price for your sins, redeeming you before the sun sets forever on the cost of your sins. Now, just listen to this next part, jumping into verse 11. Oh, afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, well, did you come through the doors of Crossview today? Feeling storm-tossed and less comforted, perhaps, than you might like, sailor. Listen carefully to God speaking your high seas love language now. Verse 11 continues, Behold, I will set your stones in antimony. Antimony, that's metallic solder or metal color, thin set mortar. And lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of agate, your gates of carbuncles, and all your wall of precious stones. This is supposed to get you really, really excited as a retired, storm-tossed sailor, perhaps. Ever seen what people look like when they are storm-tossed and not comforted, coming off of a, coming off of violent ocean waves? They look like drunk sailors when they get off of the boat. It's like the overacting on the bridge of the Enterprise. Yeah. On Star Trek. It's kind of it was shifting that way and then that way. They can barely walk. They are still reeling from still having their wild, crazy sea legs. Oh, afflicted one that just greatly desires and hopes to reach port, any port, solid, dry ground. God is in a building project for you. There's even sapphires, precious stones in the foundation that is partially or totally unseen. You are worth it, blood-bought saints. You are worth pouring hidden sapphires into the foundation for. Jesus, Jesus at his cross says, you are worthy of every sapphire buried in that, found, that foundation just to get it out of the ground. And God autographs his work with glorious perfection. So you don't just kiss the bare dirt when you come out storm-tossed and uncomforted by the world standards of measuring, you are to be ushered into the most opulent city full of delights around every corner from the bottom up. So it seems, after all, that, that we are headed for a heavenly city, a most gorgeous, beyond our imagination city. The heavenly Jerusalem, might I say. So it's fitting, Christian, that you should sew on extra goat skins now. I'm sorry, extra goat hair now. And breaking forth into singing. Break forth into singing. That, that's even as we are studying evangelism today because more children of promise are on the way. Amen. So having captured some prizes in Isaiah 54, we rush back with them to Galatians 4.28. Now you brothers and sisters like Isaac are children of promise. Glory, hallelujah. Can you feel the wonder of your storm tossed today, but home port tomorrow arrival in the kingdom of glory, beloved children of promise, saints of the Lord. This is the true gospel of prosperity. Not your best life now, today, in this life, but in the glorious pouring jewels into the foundation building project of our Lord. Future Jerusalem waits for us. On to verse 29 now. But just as at that time he was born according to the flesh, 
persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit. This was part of our scripture reading this morning in Genesis 21, if you, you want to see it. Genesis 21, 9 describes the persecution. Now don't blink, or you might miss it. Genesis 21, beginning in verse 9, But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, laughing. There it is. That's all the persecution in the text. And the name Isaac means he laughs, and laughing is a major theme in the storyline. So here we see that Ishmael, Ishmael, ironically, gets in trouble for laughing at. He laughs. Isn't that fascinating? The NIV makes the call, the son of Hagar was mocking. So just to clear this up, the word here for laughter is actually an intensive form of the Hebrew word for laughter that is scoffing or laughing in mockery. John Cal Calvin remarks on this in a fascinating manner. There is more venom in this than in all persecutions. For how much more alarming is it that the grace of divine adoption shall be made void than that this frail life shall be taken from us. Ishmael did not persecute his brother with the sword, but what is worse, he treated him with haughty disdain by trampling underfoot the promise of God. All persecutions arise from this source that wicked men despise and hate in the elect, the grace of God. In the book. So Galatians 4.29 reports, but just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, so also it is now. Meaning, meaning now the circumcision game is persecuting the Apostle Paul and all who follow him into faith in the cross of Christ and his death and blood and resurrection alone for justification. The circumcision party the circ circumcision party's heads must be swimming by now. Notice in the text, the proud Jewish heritage circumcision crowd just became Ishmaelites and Hagar's slaves again. Now, please allow me to share another mystery. There's a people group back in the day that are living relatively nearby, relatively. They are known to be, at the time, descendants of Hagar. Ishmaelites, and they are called Nabataean Arabs. So please grasp this now. The Jewish circumcision party claiming to be confessing Christians but rejecting the all-sufficiency of Christ on the cross for justification before God are enjoying being on the inside of Orthodox Judaism in the discussion, so they think. So they think. The argument they argue for circumcision of pagan converts to Christianity, for example, from the inside of the heritage of historic traditional Judaism and Jerusalem temple life is what they are, are talking about and arguing for. So let me suggest that here in verse 29, this is Paul's version of cleansing the temple. He turns the tables on the Jewish heritage Christians that are demanding that the law be part of their justification God. So in historical context, this would be like saying about 150 miles that way through the hills, through the mountains, are the Ishmaelites. Now if they come riding into town tomorrow as Ishmaelites, outriders from the blood and the cross of Christ, would you follow part of the parts of the law that they insist on you following these Ishmaelites? These Jewish heritage impious Pharisees are rejecting Paul's teaching and they're labeled as foreigners in the text for the sake of the cross. In view of the cross, they are now outed as Ishmaelites, children of Hagar, and she slaves. She slaves. And furthermore, now since Messiah has come, Hagar's Messiah rejecting Jerusalem is a slaving, cursed, failed system of suffering, unjustification. That's outside of the all-sufficient blood of the cross of Christ Jesus. So the faithful former pagan Galatians are the insiders. And who are the outsiders now? 
the Judaizers, the circumcision game. To rely on the law for justification, even partially, is to rely on the works of the flesh. And so the true contextual meaning of verse 29 pops. But, but just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so also it is now. And this comes down to where we started today, worship. Remember we started with Thomas worshiping in the wounds of Jesus, our risen Savior, as proof of resurrection, which is proof of justification. So verse 30 continues. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave woman shall not inherit the son of the free woman. And as you may have noticed in our scripture reading, it's Sarah specifically in scripture that says, cast out the slave woman and her son. And without getting into the niceties that are missing in Sarah's directive, the apostle Paul is saying, cast out the circumcision party out of the church. That is, if they will not submit to this authoritative teaching by the Apostle Paul. But even more importantly than whether or not anyone is bounced out of their church situation in that day is this. Cast their bad doctrine out of your hearts, beloved. Bits and pieces of this, of this doctrine can be found in every church from here to kingdom come. Don't return to the slavery of justification by works. This is the point of verse 31. So brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. Expel justification by fleshly works, believer. So chapter 5, verse 1 calls us to calls us as faithful believers. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke. Of slavery. So the contextual meaning of verse 1 of chapter 5 is Jesus died on the cross to free you, Christian, to free you from the condemnation of the Old Testament law, which no one but Jesus could perfectly fulfill. So don't return to a yoke of slavery to the law to be justified in the eyes of God. That's returning to a state of being cursed. If you do that, you are leaving Judeo-Christianity far behind following Hagar and Ishmael and the corrupt Jerusalem that enslaves. You shall not be in league with Hagar and Ishmael. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. The Lord has spoken His worship Father. We do worship you. We thank you for this freedom through the blood of Christ, Father. For we are justified by the, the life, the death, the cross, the, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is to be our new temple, our new center of worship, both today and in the future in the New Jerusalem. So, Father, we commit this, this week into your care, and we're so excited to hear from Trent now about evangelism. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
going from a regular conversation into a gospel conversation. We, we, we don't just simply start giving a canned speech to people. We can, we can do that, um, but people don't always react well to that. So what we try to do is go from a regular conversation into a gospel conversation. And it occurred to me that one of my favorite phrases works here. Every Friday, TGIF, TGIF. Well, today I'm going to talk about TGIF. We want to transition, we want to go from a regular conversation that we're talking about, like we did in, in, the, in the time yesterday. So, for instance, Aiden, I'm going to come here for just a second, okay? What are you going to struggle with this week? And be redeemed. 
God Almighty. So what I want to practice today, last week, as we do our practices, we do our, our, our repetition, is talk to them. Find out what's going on in their life. Right? And we want to understand each other just a little bit better. So on, on our phones, if you're interested in it, uh, you can download them for free. It's called Life on Mission. It's a free app through Apple.com or whatever place you can download your apps from. Hmm. And it will guide you through the same thing, just a simple step-by-step. -step. In case you want to if you want something easy to use, I know a number of people have used those already and been successful with this. Okay, so about five minutes or so, and then we'll, we'll close out. What's up, Tim? How you doing, Tim? <laughs> With my cat. You know, I see him sometimes. I see him with Sabre before. Did we see him before? No. I saw him with Sabre before. It's good to see you. Thank you for describing. To describe. My friend described for her channel. Tim, he described. Hey Tim, you know seeing is believing. Yes, in he's Jesus. A, he's a question too. He's a question. I can only describe to it. Yeah. Cause he knows. He's a question. Yeah. We add him in mod. Add him in mod. He's a mod now. Sorry, no. He's a good mod. You know, one thing I learned today, you know, they were talking about uh, somebody in the Bible where he, he had to put his hand through or touch him, whatever. Thomas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the thing is, it's not seeing the belief in Jesus. 
it, it's not like Philly or anything. It's, it's Bolivia. Switching is actually no one to see there. You don't need to see or touch Bolivia. And that's what Jesus told Thomas afterwards. He, he said, you've seen with your eyes and felt with your hands, but those that will follow after you that will understand me even better who don't see me. Yeah. Because um, that's faith. That, yeah. that, that's, it's that's, faith that's, is that brings you to Jesus, not seen. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> people heard you. Yeah, people heard you on TikTok. Oh. I got people in the chat that I know. Yeah. They're listening. Nice. It's good to put on TikTok. We, we like to share the gospel. That's a good to thing to want to share. Out there. You're, you're already especially doing what I'm talking about. Yeah, especially TikTok. There's a lot of people that are just Hate. in the sin. Mm -hmm. And they need to know, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was telling her earlier, you can be the light and share the gospel. You can be the light of all of these people on TikTok. You can... Mm -hmm. Be the light, and then they'll come to Jesus mm -hmm. by you, mm -hmm. by sh sharing the lie, giving people, you know, this, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. I got this one friend. He lives in Texas. He goes, I know him from TikTok for a long time. Mm -hmm. and he's a Christian himself. Right there, you go. I, I think I've seen you before on uh, Sayer Brothers. Oh, it could be. I, I do buy groceries. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I, I thought I'd think of <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up real quick. All right. See, look, he's getting up there. Look, my friend, he's tapping the screen right now. Yeah, okay. 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 He's uh, tapping the screen. I appreciate it. That's good. So, believe it or not, that was my I, I know. That it's, was it's wild. Talking about the Lord, the time flies. Any, any success stories from this week that anyone wanted to share? Any chance that you had to Thank share you. with I someone? It. It was a, it was Thank you good. so it much for tapping the screen. And show yes, some love. Uh, I'm, we're actually, me and her, are sharing the gospel right now. The people around the world, they're on TikTok, right? And people on TikTok need to know the Bible, the, the truth. You know, the more you share the gospel, the more people come to Jesus. And so that's what we try to do. So you, you found one more tool to be able to reach a lot of people. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Any other? And thank you for subscribing yes. to my chat. Okay. Oh, just without giving it to mine, tell us maybe the story of the line. My son is
are you growing from? From none, from one to a couple, to several people sharing already. It's a powerful thing of change that, that you're getting more and more apt, more able to get. So is, it, is there anyone else? Nope. Master Dan. <laughs> I take you again. You can be on my dodgeball team. So I was talking about last week about Yeah. All right, guys. God bless you guys. See you guys later.